Last time, our panel of experts explored the investment challenges Greg and Kate are faced with if they don't expand their investment focus. There's a clear case of bias that comes through in their case. And search satisficing is what we can actually see. Now, our experts explore the best advice strategies to encourage Greg and Kate to explore new opportunities that reach their $5 million goal. Hi, and welcome back to The Secrets of the Money Masters, where we're solving the problems of everyday Australians and getting them to live their financial dreams. And to help me do that, for Kate and Greg, a mid-40s couple who've got the big goal of retiring on $5 million, is Deb Kent from Integra, who is a financial planner with a difference. And I always love your style when you go in and talk to people, Deb, because you are really someone that looks a whole of life and has the tough conversations. So I'm looking forward to what you have to say about Kate and Greg and the tough conversations. Good. And joined again by Bryce Doherty from UBS. Bryce, looking for you to be the voice of reason for Kate and Greg because at the end of the day, they only know what they know. They know property and they know Australian equities. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, they've done pretty well with that today. But how can we open up the rest of the world to them? So let's start with that. Big goals, 250 grand a year, 5 million. Are they going to get there, Deb? And, and what role would an advisor play? Because they don't have one. They're open to it, but they don't in getting them there. Sure. First thing, it's really good that they have got a plan. That's the first step in seeing a financial advisor is you've actually got a plan. A and plan for their retirement? A the plan yeah. for their retirement. So okay. they've actually got a plan. So that's really good. So when, when they come and see an advisor, um, what they need to look at is what are they actually doing at the moment to get there? Are they on the right track? because things can go wrong. Yep. And so what, what, what an advisor needs to do is draw out really what they both want to achieve, how are they going to get there, what gaps do they have, and what sacrifices do they need to make? That magic word, sacrifice. <laughs> they, they feel like they're already sacrificing because they've got three kids that they're putting through private school. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure they feel that, but I'm guessing you're going to say there's more that could be done. There's more that can be done. Um, one thing that I always like to talk to people about is their budget. And, and, and I know everyone hates that word. Seriously. It is a boring word. It is a boring mm. word. Mm. But you know, it's fascinating when you actually put down on paper what you are spending, most people will go, oh my God, I didn't realise I actually spent that. You know, if, if they've had bad experiences with their investment property, someone mm. flooded their bathroom and they had to fix it and that's not cool. Um, and they know the dividends they're getting from their Australian equities aren't enough to pay for private high schools, how do we open their eyes to what mm. else there is? Well, it's interesting that they mentioned the uh, experience they had with the flooded bathroom and, mm. and the investment property. What that's an a, a example of is risk. And when you buy an investment property, everyone thinks, oh, I'll buy an investment property, I'll negatively gear it, the property always goes up, things are going to be fine. But there are risks associated, and that's one example. And similarly, there are risks associated with Australian shares. You know, Australian shares only represent 2 to 3% of the overall market and they do go up and down. And there are sectors in Australia um, that are very, very strong, but there are also sectors that are missing here. So there are a lot of things that they're missing out on by just being in uh, Australian shares and property. And Australian property and their incomes here in Australia. So right. there's a lot of money put into Australia better work out. That's right. Yeah, okay. And Deb, how would you go about educating them. I mean, advisors have got a big job to do. When people understand property, mm. it's very hard to teach them. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? Let's you can. That way. You can? Absolutely, you can. And I mean, especially with, um, with Kate and Greg, I think what I would be looking at for them is, yes, they've got a concentration in Australian equities and property, but how do they diversify, mm. diversify around the world? International investing is so great because you get so much exposure to companies that we do know. And one of the things I noticed with Kate and Greg, we invest in what we know. Well, okay, internationally, we can invest into Facebook, into Google, into General Motors Hold and into American Express. These are all companies that we know and potentially we, we know we them use. and use them every day. Yeah. So yeah. it's that education yeah. process around, it's not scary. Yeah. It's good diversification. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it, I watch this, and these guys are my age, you know, so our age, really, I, it comes back to Generation X versus perhaps baby boomers who've been taught to be quite sensible with money mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. save, whereas our generation, mm -hmm. I don't know what went wrong, really, but like, like we want everything now or yeah. 
it's a live in the moment type thing and and to, this is the word sacrifice i laugh but it's it's a dirty word to generation x how do we talk to x differently than baby boomers and i want you both to answer mm. this because i think it's the biggest challenge of all for advisors to really get in the psyche of gen x things have got to change well i think kate and greg have already done uh, a really good job at getting their head around saving and planning for the future probably far better than a lot of other gen x people you're talking about so they are in fact saving they are putting money they away did do a five week trip to germany to go skiing with their kids last year though like would deb would deb tell them that they shouldn't do that well well i was going to say that while they seem to have the saving bit under control they don't have any real visibility on their spending mm -hmm. and back to deb's earlier point you know that i didn't hear them talk about having a budget or working out where the surplus is coming from I think that the way that Greg and Kate are talking about a $250,000 a year income in retirement is a great way to talk to Gen X people. I think Gen X people have experienced superannuation since 1992 being compulsory. They think about it as accumulating this huge number. And one day when I retire, I'll have this big number. I think it's much better for people to think about it as this is what my income or my wage is going to be for the house um, when I'm retired. Yeah, okay. And Deb, what do you think? How do you talk to Gen X without making them go, oh? <laughs> I'm pretty blunt usually. <laughs> I love that about because, you. Uh, because when I do do a budget and I can see what they're spending and then I can show them if they just cut that down a little bit, what that looks like for the future, just saving that little bit extra and what they can have when they get to that. You're right, Bryce. They need to focus on what am I going to live on. Most people don't know. That's where they get a bit scared because that's when we start to look about, you know, do we need $5 million? I think $5 million is, is, is a fabulous goal. Are you going to get there? But the other thing that I think is not really coming out in Kate and Greg's is their strategy. What is their strategy? Have they taken into consideration tax or superannuation? Mm. And they've said they haven't. Like that's, that's no. the stuff they were like, well, we would need advice And for to that. be honest, strategy should come first. Mm. Strategy is what comes first and then underpin it with what needs to be invested. And definitely diversification, not having your eggs all in one basket. At mm. the moment, we've got two baskets of eggs. Mm. Mm. Are they tax effective? Um, well, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Uh, mm. we're, we're using the dividends. We're... What if we could reinvest that dividend? Mm. What's the impact of that compounding mm. of those dividends? It can be quite dramatic. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, it's definitely, I can see that Kate and Greg would definitely benefit from that strategy planning that you're talking about and the mm. budgeting that no one mm. in Gen X wants to deal with but will um, and going global and diversifying. Thank you both for entering the conversation and helping them. They're very typical of many, many Generation X around the country and I think we'll see more and more people having these conversations. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Want to let go of old thinking and discover wealth reinvented? Download our exclusive ebook, A Guide to Finding Returns, in the new Investor Reality. Coming up next, see how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected Kate and Greg's plans and hear our experts weigh in.